Hey everyone, this is day three of my week of daily videos recounting incredible stories involving animals. Today we're looking at the story of Cher Ami, the homing pigeon who saved hundreds of soldiers' lives in World War I, becoming one of the most decorated animals to serve in any war. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you want to come back and hear the rest of the stories this week, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Now, let's take a look at the story of Cher Ami. On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated, prompting Austria to invade Serbia. This was the beginning of the Great War, which is now known as World War I. It was one of the deadliest conflicts in human history, with over 30 nations getting involved, and as many as 40 million people estimated to have lost their lives. But humans weren't the only casualties of the war. Around 8 million horses died over the four years that the war raged, as well as 8 million other animals, including dogs, camels, and pigeons. In World War I, Technology was far less advanced than it was in the Second World War. There were very few missiles, submarines, or tanks, and radio communication was extremely limited. As a result, horses were heavily relied on for the transport of equipment and artillery, as well as for reconnaissance and for carrying messengers. But World War I was fought heavily in the trenches, so sending important messages by land was a very dangerous act. Not only were messengers regularly captured and killed, but their messages were intercepted by the enemy, often revealing sensitive information. For British troops on the front line, there was one domestic animal that played an important role in getting information back to headquarters quickly. Homing pigeons. Historical records show that homing pigeons have been used as messengers since ancient times. However, the exact mechanisms behind their remarkable ability to find their way home remain unclear. While magnetoreception, which is the ability to detect Earth's magnetic fields, likely plays a role in determining direction, pigeons also rely on their keen eyesight and memory to recognize landmarks. Although they cannot navigate in complete darkness or poor visibility, messenger pigeons offer significant advantages in wartime. They're easily transportable, require minimal sustenance, and can travel swiftly, outpacing runners, cyclists, and even horseback riders. During historical conflicts, pigeons played a crucial role as messengers. These feathered couriers were employed successfully in both aircraft and ships. However, their most common use in World War I was by the British Expeditionary Force. The Carrier Pigeon Service, overseen by Directorate of Army Signals, facilitated communication from the frontline trenches or advancing units. To ensure efficient message delivery, pigeons were housed in either stationary or mobile lofts. Stationary lofts were sometimes set up in outbuildings, sheds, or even on rooftops. In the field, wooden sheds were constructed to serve as homes for the pigeons. Once the pigeons became accustomed to their mobile loft's position, these lofts could be shifted forward or backward as needed. The pigeons adhered to a strict regimen. They were fed only once a day, half an hour before sunset, and abstained from food for at least 24 hours after leaving the loft. To optimize navigation, pigeons were released no less than half an hour before sunset, avoiding foggy conditions or early mornings. And for utmost secrecy, sensitive messages were encoded, just in case the enemy were to intercept the message. In 1917, when the Great War had already been raging for three years, Germany decided to attack U.S. merchant ships around the British Isles. This sparked the United States to join the war. And among the four million troops that they sent over was a bright young lawyer named Charles W. Whittlesey. Born in Florence, Wisconsin, Whittlesey went on to graduate from Harvard Law School in 1908, before joining a law firm in New York City. He practiced law for nine years, but with the American entry into World War I, Whittlesey decided to take a leave from his practice 
and enlisted in the U.S. Army. He was made captain of the 308th Infantry, 77th Division, which was comprised mainly of men from New York. They were sent directly to the Western Front, and within only four months, Whittlesey was promoted to major. By the fall of 1918, an attack was planned that would result in the end of the war. The Moose argonne offense would involve over a million troops and take part along the entire Western Front. Whittlesey was put in charge of a battalion of 554 men, and on October 2nd, they marched through a ravine that would end up becoming their prison. Whittlesey's troops found themselves isolated, their supply lines severed, and under relentless German fire. Snipers surrounded them, wave after wave of German troops attacked with hand grenades and flamethrowers, and they even began to fall under friendly fire. Friendly fire is when troops on your own side start firing at you mistakenly. The other Allied forces were not aware of the battalion's coordinates, and they began to drop artillery on Whittlesey and his men. But there weren't just men trapped in the ravine. They had brought along with them eight pigeons. And one of those pigeons was Cherami, whose name means dear friend. Whittlesey had no idea just how dear of a friend Cherami would turn out to be. A few months prior, the British Home Forces Pigeon Service donated 600 English-bred homing pigeons to the U.S. Army. In July, 60 were sent to Rampont, France, in order to prepare them for the Moose Argonne Offensive. Of those 60 birds, 8 were assigned to Whittlesey and his battalion. As the men came under fire and they became aware that they were trapped, they decided to send off the first pigeon. They sent it with this message. Many wounded, we cannot evacuate. But as soon as it took off, it was shot down by German troops. So they tried again, this time with the message, Men are suffering, can support be sent? But this pigeon met the same fate. Seven of the eight pigeons were sent off with messages in the first two days, but all of them were immediately shot and killed. Eventually, they became aware that at least some of the fire they were coming under was from their own side. It was clear that their coordinates weren't known by their allies, so on October 4th, the decision was made to send out the final pigeon, Cherami. Whittlesey was fed up, and his final message showed his frustration. He wrote, We are along the road parallel to 276.4. Our own artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sake, stop it! The message was written on onion paper, fastened to Cherami's right leg, and he was released into the sky. The soldiers watched with anticipation as he took off above the tree line. But as he rose into the sky, a bullet hit him and he fell. Hope seemed lost. But then a miracle happened. Cher Ami took off again above the tree line, this time escaping any further shots and disappearing out of sight. Now, all Whittlesey and his troops had to do was wait. Cher Ami flew 25 miles in 25 minutes, making it back to the mobile loft he had been trained to return to extremely quickly, especially for an injured bird. And his injuries were serious. The bullet had hit his breast, blinded him in one eye, and essentially severed his right leg. The very leg that had the message that he was supposed to deliver. But by some miracle, his severed leg was holding on only by a tendon, and on the dangling limb was the life-saving message sent by Whittlesley. The friendly fire ceased, but it still took Allied forces three more days to rescue Whittlesey and his men. By the time they got there, the battalion had suffered heavy losses. Of the 554 men, 107 had been killed, 63 were missing, and 190 were wounded. Only 194 men were able to walk out of the ravine on their own. Regardless, Cherami was made a war hero, and his story made it into international media. After doctors mended his wounds the best they could, 
the French government awarded him the Croix de Guerre with Palm for his heroic deeds in combat. A few months later, he was put on a boat and sent to the United States. Arriving in Fort Monmouth, New Jersey in April of 1919. But unfortunately, he never properly recovered from the wound to his chest, and as a result, his health steadily declined until he died on June 13th of that year. His body was donated to the Smithsonian Institution, where he was taxidermied and put on display. He has been on display continuously since 1921 and can still be found in the National Museum of American History's Price of Freedom exhibit. Posthumously, he received several awards and recognitions, including a gold medal from the Organized Bodies of American Racing Pigeon Fanciers, an Animals in War and Peace Medal of Bravery, and he was inducted into the Racing Pigeon Hall of Fame. He has also featured in books, essays, television shows, and movies. Whittlesey was also heavily decorated, also receiving the Croix de Guerre with Palm, as well as the Medal of Honor, the World War I Victory Medal, the Officer of the Legion of Honor, the Italian War Cross, and the Knight Commander of the Order of Prince Danilo I. And just like Cher Ami, his life post-war was short and sad. After returning home a war hero, he found that he was in demand non-stop for parades and speeches, and while everyone around him celebrated, he found himself unable to escape the memory of the painful cries of his comrades as they died. In November 1921, he boarded a ship to Cuba. After dining with the captain on the first night, he excused himself for the evening and was never seen again. It's assumed that he jumped off the ship and ended his own suffering at sea. And that's it for today's video. Come back tomorrow to hear the story of Bobby the Wonder Dog, who traveled over 2,000 miles on foot to be reunited with his owners. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons, whose support means that this channel is possible. If you want to join us on Patreon, check out the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.